Hey, good morning, guys. I was gonna go um, shave, and you know, because I'm, I'm, I got some uh, stubblies on top of my head, and you know, I need to line up my beard, and you know, look all polished up. But the topic I wanted to talk about was rejection, you know, and the infection of rejection, and it's just going along with the extremities series that I'm working on, and. I don't think we realize the depth of why we do what we do and the decisions we make and the people we we accept into our lives are all based out of our rejection in a lot of cases. Um, so I decided to do this uh, video just as I am, you know, in the morning. Uh, morning breath, <laughs> you know, uh, wearing a wrinkly t-shirt. I'm still a little stuffy from um, the sinus infection I had, but um, I just wanted to be real. I just wanted to be real. I mean, so many things in our society are airbrushed, polished. We're presenting our best self, but that's not always who we are when the lights are off, who we are when we're alone. Who we are when people aren't watching us. I mean, though, that's a part of us, you know. That that's uh, that's us when we want to, uh, you know, look sharp and 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 be beautiful, you know, with the with the glitz and the glam. But that's not often who we are when the storm comes, when stress comes, when the the shizzy hits the fizzy. <laughs> and I just wanted to do a video about how rejection plays into that, you know? And, and so I titled it The Infection of Rejection. Um, and I'm just gonna use a lot of personal examples. You guys know how I am. And just, you know, as I as I grew up, you know, when I was young, I mean, a lot of you guys know I was the fat kid when I was younger. Um, and, and I often was teased about that, you know? And that just spun out. I mean, and that's just one of the ways I felt rejection, but that spun out into this need, hunger for acceptance and approval. And, and a lot of us struggle with that because when we have not only in, in endured rejection, but it accepted it and embraced it as part of who our identity is. I'm a failure, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm, I'm never meant to be truly loved. When we start thinking like that, and that becomes part of our psyche, it makes us so vulnerable to dysfunctional tendencies. And, you know, one of the things I, I fell into before drugs and alcohol was food, you know, um, because so many of us are looking for ways to not only, excuse me, self-soothe, but truly we're looking for ways to, uh, be accepted to be loved you know and you know temptation comes easy you know so you know uh you know I, I fell into donuts fried foods all that stuff that tastes good you know that that just melts on your mouth and then i fell into pornography you know because it looked good and and, and women were beautiful and and stunning and you know and and, and on that two-dimensional screen you know, of course they liked me, you know, um, you know, you know, it, it was a fantasy that, you know, was created. And, and you know, in, in those venues, pornography has gotten even more enticing um, in so many different arenas, you know, and I still battle that in some form or manner um, because I still struggle with rejection. You know, even though it's not as bad as it used to be, it's still there. It's still there. And a lot of us as we get older, we haven't, we haven't learned to address our issues. We learned to cover them up. We've learned to become functional alcoholics, functional addicts, functional um, people with bipolar tendencies, functional people who are depressed, functional people who struggle with fear and anxiety. We've just, we've just developed workarounds, you know, to where, we look good from nine to five, but then afterwards, we're just a hot nuclear mess, you know, doing who knows what behind closed doors. 
you know, and, and it's causing so many um, broken relationships, you know, because we're broken, you know, and I heard in a, in a sermon that rejected people reject people. And I think we've all heard that, but I don't think we understand the depth of that, you know, because what happens is, is I, using myself, you know, in the past, I would filter all my relationships through the subconscious idea that people really don't love me. Um, people really aren't going to be there when I need them. Um, you know, and we could we could trace that back to maybe abandonment issues from uh, first uh, intense relationships to, you know, whatever, you know, um, you know, and then we tie it into me having a, a poor self image to where I didn't love myself. So because I didn't love myself, I did not believe anyone else could have the capacity or maturity to love me beyond my flaws. You know, so I would get into this vicious cycle of trying to create the perfect person, <coughs> excuse me, um, which is ridiculous. You know, I, you know, I wanted the, 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 the six pack, um, the wavy hair. Now I don't have no hair, <laughs> um, the perfect teeth and, 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 and all those things superficially to attract people to a superficial skin when what was within was still fractured and broken because I, I didn't know how to fix the inside. I, I didn't even know how to address it because it was so painful and scary. And, and, and it, it's like a person who's been burned and they haven't gone through treatment to heal the burn. Anything that touches it is electrifying in its pain and intensity. Um, and often that's the way it is in counseling, you know, um, you know, I realize when I'm, when I'm talking to people that there, there is a sensitive core that has been damaged and I, and I have to go gentle to be able to get in there to put, to, to apply the medicine. But at the same time, you know, because I, you know, I want to be an authentic counselor, you know, um, I want to preach what I'm teaching. You know, I want to preach when I'm living. I want to be an example of a work in progress as I work with my clients, you know. So, you know, that's really why I do these videos, you know, especially on this series of extremities, because we will develop extreme dysfunctional behaviors out of the rejection we have not dealt with, you know, especially when it comes to relationships, you know, we will continue to seek out people who will love us with the capacity they have within, but it doesn't necessarily mean, even though, even though somebody's giving you all that they have, it doesn't mean it's all that you need. So we end up setting these unrealistic expectations on people that are even more, more broken than we are. So we set ourselves up for failure. We set ourselves up to be in this cycle of, you know, being abandoned and isolated and, and, and just unworthy, even though we are worthy, we are all worthy of love and compassion, but our technique and our strategy to, to find that has to start within us. It has to start with that person in the mirror where we start accepting ourselves Sticky parts and all. And just understanding that, okay, all right, you know what? I have issues here, here, and here. And I need to work on it. You know, and I need to be honest with people. And I need to allow them in so I can find a healthy balance in who I am. Not presenting myself, presenting them with the facade of who they think I am. But being the authentic person that I truly am, so I can truly be healed from within to develop something incredible around me. So that's my little uh, quick topic for this morning. Um, I hope I wasn't just babbling. I hope you guys got that. 
And uh, we're going to talk more about this. Okay. Love you guys. Peace. <laughs>